I'm Chris Engstad, President of Iowans for Tax Relief. Today, Laura Epke is joining us to talk about the issue of job licensing. Laura holds a PhD in political science and is a former state senator in Nebraska, where she led the charge on that state's recent job licensing reform legislation. She currently is the senior fellow for job license reform at the Platt Institute based in Lincoln, Nebraska. She's quite literally the expert on the subject. So Laura, thanks for being here, thanks coming for over to person. Iowa. Uh, today we're going to take Laura up to the Capitol to meet with legislators. We've already talked to some advocacy groups, uh, but we wanted to make sure that we could share Laura's expertise and insight on this subject with you, our ITR members. So could you start by just telling us what does the term job licensing even mean? Why is job licensing important or needed? Sure. Well, job licensing just refers to the, um, the, the state permission slip, a permission slip to, uh, to, to practice a particular occupation, um, and it is done through licensing boards and the... Uh, the, the, the job, you know, the, the, the idea behind job licensing is that it's supposed to protect safety and welfare and, you know, health of, of the public. Um, you know, we would argue, I think, that, that that's not always necessary um, to have a license do that. Sure. So let's, let's start with what's required. So if I want to pursue a certain career or an occupation that requires a license, What's required to obtain that license from the government? Well, again, it depends on the license, but at, at minimum, um, you know, you're going to have to uh, fill out some sort of an application form. You probably have to show some level of um, education, some sort of minimal levels of education um, and experience. Um, in some instances, uh, you, you have to pass tests of some sort. Um, and then finally, you have to write a check to the government uh, to get the license. So, so are some of those, you talked about having certain education requirements or a financial piece, you've got to cut a check to the government. Are those, are those, uh, are those pretty simple? Are those low hurdles to clear? Or uh, can you talk about those, those requirements? Sure. Well, I mean, when you think about physicians, for instance, I mean, most of us don't, um, you know, believe, you know, believe that we ought to have people who know what they're doing or sure. go to medical sure. school if they're a physician. Um, and so you have a level, a minimal level of education, um, and then you also, that, that you've paid for. Um, and then you also have, um, you know, some sort of a, an internship or, or a residency program. And then you have to pass certain licensing boards. Um, you know, they have national board tests for the physicians. Um, and, then, um, and then you write a check um, in Nebraska. It's once every two years. I don't know what the, you know, what, what the, the, the routine is, if it's yearly here or not. But you have to write a pretty good-sized check. Now, um, you know, for other occupations, um, you know, we were talking earlier about um, things like uh, pipeline locators, um, the people who go around and and uh, and look for the one call um, one call licensing uh, or one call um, lines. Uh, a lot of times, uh, those folks will only be making thirteen dollars an hour, and they could probably have a ten minute you know uh, primer on on the license uh, on how to work the machine and go right. out and do it right. but instead um, there is an effort underway to create a license for that so that they actually have to show that they've got X number of hours um, of training and then they have to write a check to the government so when we're talking about job licensing, we're not talking just about a physician uh, we're talking about frankly a lot of jobs would be on the sort of the lower or middle income levels of the spectrum right so so can you talk a little about what the challenge is for for some of these uh, hurdles for folks on those type of careers sure well um, talk about cosmetologists or barbers um, they oftentimes have you know anywhere between 15 and 1,500 and 2,000 hours of class time required, um, and then they have to take some sort of a test, and then they have to write the check. Well, um, going to school um, and having the experience, um, you know, to to uh, cut hair, um, if that requires you to take you know 2,000 hours worth of cosmetology school, that's a high starting point, you know, in terms of, of, of cost um, to have paid out um, in order to practice a particular um, a particular occupation and those particular occupations probably are going to take a long time before they're able to, you know, recoup their um, recoup their costs. And so, um, you know, what we want to look so, at. I mean, I mean, yeah. like, so, do you think that, that that sort of licensing, that high hurdle to clear, so to speak, maybe keeps people from entering the workforce oh, well, or pursuing sure. certain careers? I mean, it's just prohibitive. I think I think for many people it is when they actually stop and look at how much is it going to cost them um, to get to that point. Um, they may just walk away and say, okay, I don't need to do this. 
Um, maybe maybe they decide that um, that this isn't something for them. Maybe they can go out and find a job at Walmart, you know, where they don't have to have a license. Sure. Or maybe they can, um, you know, maybe they don't do anything. So, so if there might be some folks might look at a, a career and decide there's too much of a financial commitment to pursue that. Uh, there's too much time and effort on the education front to pursue that. Whether it's necessary or not, I don't know. But so, so maybe if that was changed, uh, that'd be better. But I guess why the need for reform? Doesn't the public or the consumer need some level of oversight? Is is there a way to protect the public, so to speak, without going into licensing? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, you know, we live in the 21st century, and um, you know, I, if if I'm going to go to a new uh, a new uh, cosmetologist or if I'm going to go to a new barber, first thing I do is I look them up on Google. Sure, and, and sure. You see, and you see what the rating is, um, and and you see if anybody has said bad things about them. Um, you know, it, we live in a day and age where you have these instant reviews, and you know, so at some level, the citizens, um, the consumers, have to be aware of. Um, you know how much something is costing them, how much, wh whether or not this is a quality product um, that, that this person provides or not. Licensing has expanded over the years as we've become more and more of a service economy. Mm -hmm. So you know, so it sounds like the free market itself could take care of some of this pr protection, especially a, a Yelp review yeah. or a four star rating. Um, but what about the what about a financial piece? What 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 ways are there to protect the consumer, protect the public financially, uh, that might sh stop short of going all the way to licensure? Well, you know, um, civil. Uh, th there's always civil uh, um, opportunities. You know, bonding, insurance. You know, you can make sure that somebody comes in and registers. Um, we we've talked at different times about um, an instance where you have a really bad hailstorm that comes in, and you see all of these kind of fly by night um, companies. Rather than requiring that they be licensed to do something, what you could do is you could say, okay, if you want to if you want to do this, if you want to put on new shingles or new siding, you don't have to be licensed in the state, but you do have to register with the state and you have to you know show proof of bonding um, and insurance. Um, th there are alternative ways of protecting the public that, that doesn't require full on licensing. Yeah, would, would licensing maybe be the last resort? Uh, that would be my opinion? last. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So you know, one time is we've uh, dug into this issue. One of the terms we come across a lot is the term a red tape tax. Can you explain what that is? Sure. Well, the idea of a red tape tax is that um, when, it, when you have more red tape to get to a point of, of um, licensure uh, to be able to practice, um, that adds on to the cost or th th that it's going to be for the consumer. So if I have to spend um, $40,000 or $20,000 or whatever to become a cosmetologist. Or just devote so many oh, yeah. days or weeks yeah, or years yeah. of your life. Yeah, right? if, if, you, if you're devoting this time, then the cost um, to the consumer is going to be up because I have to recoup those costs. That's right. So, so I mean, it, it becomes costly for the uh, for the practitioner, uh, and, and those costs, of course, get passed on to the consumer or passed on to the employer. We're, we're all uh, moving ahead. Are there other costs of job licensing reforms, um, uh, hidden costs, and maybe not even financial ones, but, but what is this holding back or prohibiting? Well, I mean, it, it, it prohibits a certain level of entrepreneurship. I mean, you know, it, it prevents people from taking chances um, because um, the, the cost of um, being in a position where you can take a chance and even to get to the starting line even to get to the high. starting line is pretty high um, it also um, you know one of the things that you know people don't stop and think about so much is it also holds people back from having second chances so people who for instance have been in prison um, you know maybe they have um, you know they, they've they've straightened out their ways they're getting out of prison and they want to go and you know practice in a particular um, area or occupation um, the cost involved to them to be able to get to the point of being licensed can sometimes be so high that it makes no sense um, whatsoever for them to do it. And so, um, you know, what we did in Nebraska was we put in a, um, a requirement that licensing boards have to tell people up front whether or not um, they're... Um, their so that, that criminal history that, they, yeah, that, they've, so, that they've served and done their time, that they've done their time to, but, but, sure. but 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 so they, they have to be able to tell people up front whether or not that's going to prohibit them from getting a license so um, they don't go through all the so, time and effort and right. money. yeah because because um, what we what we what we have found um, around the country is that you know people will get out of prison and they say okay I'm gonna go be a barber and then they find out that um, that, that that the licensing um, requirements in their state don't allow anybody who's had a penalty a, a felony conviction to be a barber 
Sure. I, I assume there's some common sense uh, uh, sort of hard nose that might need to stay in place, sure. but otherwise... Uh... Well, you know, what, what, what I encourage people to do is say that, you know, that, that the licensing board has to draw a parallel or a line between um, the particular conviction sure. and the, the, the license. So, um, you know, you and I would agree that um, somebody who's had a um, child, uh, a child molestation conviction, for instance, um, probably shouldn't be working um, as a as a child care provider. Sure. Um, you know, and certainly that would exclude them from being um, an elementary school teacher or even a you know high school. But 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 it doesn't doesn't necessarily prohibit them from being a good barber or a good um, electrician or any number of other things that require licensing. What, whatever, the, whatever the conviction may or may not have been, there's some, again, some common sense restrictions would mm -hmm. be there, but otherwise folks need a chance to earn right. a living. Right. You know, it, it's, it sounds like there could be an element of competition with our neighboring states. I mean, in Iowa, we've got large population centers on the borders, whether it's Dubuque, uh, which which sits right next to Illinois and Wisconsin, the Quad Cities next to Illinois, uh, out out west uh, in your neck of the woods, Council mm -hmm. Bluffs and Omaha or Sioux City, mm -hmm. uh, which again would be right near Nebraska and South Dakota. And so, what else are states doing in, on on this front? How can we remain competitive? How can we make sure people live and work in Iowa? Sure. Well, what, what a lot of um, what a lot of states are doing, and certainly Nebraska is doing it as well as other states, is is looking at their licenses for things like teachers and nurses and and and, and that sort of thing, where um, you know they they um, have started to create reciprocal arrangements sure. with other states. Um, this is particularly um, important on these border in, in these border areas and on areas where you have l large military populations where people move in and out a lot. Sure. Um, you know, I, I, I was, um, I think I told you earlier that we had a, uh, um, we had an instance where um, one of the commanding officers um, at, at STRATCOM in Omaha, Bellevue, um, his wife came and testified before the education committee. She had a degree in education. She had been licensed to, to teach um, in schools around the, you know, around the country in different states. But getting to Nebraska, she couldn't get licensed in Nebraska sure. without taking additional education. Sure, and by yeah. the time she's done with that, it's time Th to it's move time on to, move to the again. next post. Yeah. I get it. So, you know, are there are there threats on the horizon? Do you foresee more licensing coming in the future? Yeah, um, you know, there there are several bills in the Nebraska legislature. I suspect that if we dug into the the bills in in um, in, in Iowa, that you'd find the same thing. Um, there are a lot of organizations, a lot of um, uh, trade associations, if you will, who um, you know search for sort of a legitimacy through licensing, and they say, okay, um, you know, interior design for one. Um, so we've got a license interior designers. There's yeah. a public safety threat. Well, that's the, 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 you know okay. th that's that that's the argument that there's some public safety involved. I'm not sure that there is, um, but at the very least, they want licensing um, so that they can. Um, so, so that they can compete, that they can say that they are professionals, um, just like uh, you know, just like the architects and the, the the contractors and engineers that they work with, and so you have this this real um, this real danger that you know one of these days everybody's going to be licensed for something because that's the only way that they can feel good about their job. And that's and that's essentially the government weighing in on yeah, it. And I'm yeah. not sure that's always the best solution. So. You know, before we uh, head up the hill and go to the Capitol and chat with legislators, maybe just tell our members, why were you such a champion for this in Nebraska? Well, you know, I was always, um, I've always been a, a smaller government person. I believe that, um, you know, government needs to get out of our way, that we need to find ways to, um, you know, let the economy grow organically. And when government gets in the way, it's really tough for for, uh, for folks to take chances. Um, you know, I think that uh, I, I, grew, uh, yeah, I grew up and I live in a, in a rural area that is, um, that is bleeding population. Um, we need to find ways to make it easier for our young folks to come back and take chances um, uh, and, and grow the economy in those rural areas. Yeah, I think that's the, those are the same sort of things why it resonates with, with ITR. We view this as a, uh, an economic freedom issue. We should make it easier, not harder, for people to pursue their careers or occupations. Uh, we view this as part of the solution to our workforce needs in this state. Let's not prohibit people or keep people out of the workforce. Uh, and then finally, again, Iowans for tax relief. Uh, while this may not be a direct tax, uh, we certainly see it as a red tape tax as well. We want to reduce that burden. So we'll continue to promote this uh, issue, and we appreciate Laura and the good people at Platt Institute for uh, coming to Iowa and spending time educating people here.